awareness of battle. So, how long have you known each other? It was like brothers. One day you came back. The past came back too. There may have been a time when Damien had your back. No friends in the industry. But that's not what he's doing now. My brothers been my brothers, man. They ain't no kidding me up that. Before I got locked up, I was the best. You a coward, bro. And a fraud. I spent half your life in a cell. Watching somebody else live your life. I had to draw the line. I'm just getting started, little brother. I had to draw the line between my brothers and my enemies. I'm coming for it all. Aloha! This is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man, coming to you live once again from beautiful Hawaii here on the Island of Oahu, bringing you, yes you, the best movie reviews on the entire island of Oahu. And yes, this is Trinidad, the Island Man, your Island Man. And uh, well, I know it's been a minute uh, since I've filmed on a different location <laughs> on the island. And uh, well, for the opening weekend of Creed 3, I went ahead and uh, picked a nice spot. Plus, it's not raining today, at least not yet. There's still plenty of clouds in the sky, but uh, it's definitely shaping up to be a little better of a weekend than the last couple of weekends. Uh, so for the moment, it's dry. All right, so Creed 3, what did I think? Uh, here are my thoughts, and there's going to be some spoilers in this, so be prepared for some spoilers. That's the best way I can describe this movie, uh, you know, is going to be with the spoilers, unfortunately. Um, well, let me go ahead and get right to it. Remember our rating scale, shock a thumbs up, it's good to see, I recommend it. Shock a thumbs down, it's junk, I don't recommend it. And for Creed 3, it is a shock a thumbs down. Now, that does not mean that, you know, Michael B. Jordan or Jonathan Majors, or even Tessa Thompson uh, don't do fantastic jobs in this movie. Uh, and Michael B. Jordan, this is his directorial debut. And both acting-wise and directing-wise, I think he, he makes uh, some really good decisions here. Uh, some strange decisions I didn't really agree with, uh, and that's going to be some of the spoilers. Uh, but overall, uh, although their performances are once again excellent, you know, you cannot fault Jonathan Majors uh, at all. Any of his stuff that I've seen, he has done fantastic in. And, you know, Michael B. Jordan, he always brings it. And, you know, Tessa Thompson in the right role uh, really shines. And uh, this has been one of the roles. Um, that being said... Spoilers ahead. Um, it's the story, basically, that is the stumbling block for this movie. Um, you know, that makes it weaker than the first Creed or even the second Creed. Um, and what do I mean by that? Uh, this hour is 153 minutes. Uh, well, it's an hour and 53 minutes. Um, and there are places where it kind of drags and it kind of drifts around. You know, everything from Sylvester Stallone and Rocky up to the first Creed and the second Creed has been kind of a family, uh, you know, a little bit of a family dynamic. You know, Rocky, uh, you know, kind of a mentorship dynamic and, you know, between him and his coach and... Um, you know, a family dynamic, you know, Rocky and his wife, um, you know, Rocky and his son in Rocky Five, um, you know, uh, up until like the last couple of Rockies, you know, um, you know, maybe, maybe, well, yeah, I guess maybe Rocky Four still had that family element and Rocky Six where his family was lost you know he was the sole survivor you know Adrian had been long gone um, 
and uh, you know it's just how he's trying to get back into it and then he has another shot at the title um, and well why do I bring up those movies uh, because Rocky 1 and 2 were basically mentorship films Sylvester Stallone was there he was uh, the Burgess Meredith coach taking on that persona and teaching the wrong young rock Adonis Creed Michael B Jordan the ropes and even how to power through a more powerful enemy when he got to Rocky II with uh, the son of Drago uh, here in Rocky III um, you know for whatever reason you know there's been some controversy uh, Sylvester Stallone is not in this movie at all uh, he is not even mentioned in this movie. We have no idea what happened to Rock. Uh, you know, he was old at the end of Creed II. Uh, it looked like he might die at the end of Creed I, you know, or at least in the middle with that uh, cancer scare or whatever. Uh, no mention of his brain damage from uh, when uh, <laughs> he was in Russia. But, uh, uh, but I, I digress. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't even mention anything about, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's been years since Rocky had passed away. Or, you know, there were moments in here that you're missing that beat of, you know, a more experienced fighter, maybe somebody more experienced in life in general and family uh, and the struggles of life and how to help one get over that. Uh, that's what you're missing here because Michael B. Jordan uh, as Adonis Creed he is conflicted in this movie um, you know we find out we get a long backstory of Adonis Creed in his youth how he had gone to I guess Juvie uh, long or you know how he was in Juvie and well in Juvie uh, he was beaten by one of the guards or the counselors there along with his friend uh, Damien who Jonathan Major plays uh, but there is some you know later in their teenagers uh, young teenage lives um, they get revenge on the counselor and unfortunately it is something that Michael B. Jordan's character Adonis Creed uh, instigates and unfortunately, Jonathan Majors is left holding the bag and has to do an 18-year prison stint for it. Um, and during that time, you know, during Creed 1 and 2, we'd never heard of this guy. And basically, you know, Damien comes back out of prison, looks up Adonis, looks at the life that he had uh, lived while he was stuck in prison, saying that that should have been my life. You know, he was a young Golden Globes up-and-coming boxer heading towards the Olympics, more than likely. Probably the next heavyweight champion, Jonathan Major's character, Damien. Uh, and all of that was taken away by his nearly two decades in prison. Well, he wants a shot at the title, which is one of Adonis Creed's uh, protégés that he's been training up at his gym. And uh, this is a story of him sneakily... Um, you know, he had this diabolical plan, Jonathan Majors, of getting his shot at the title and stealing it from uh, the protege of, uh, you know, Adonis Creed, uh, his one-time friend. And, uh, you know, we see a very dirty fight in this title match. And, um, you know, and then, you know, almost killing... Uh, you know, the younger protege of Adonis Creed. Um, and thus he swears revenge against his former friend, now turned enemy, Damien, and to try to win the title back away from him since he had used such underhanded means, you know, like elbows and cheap shots to the body and, you know, groin shots, etc. Um, you know, he just picks apart, you know, Adonis' Creed's fighter uh, and very quickly takes the title, um, you know, from him. Uh, so right away, I guess the story is, you know, they build up this backstory and this past friendship. And even when he approaches him, uh, you know, worming his way back into Adonis Creed's life, you know, Damien does. Um, 
you know, all that is pretty well done. But then the story kind of falls apart. Uh, I don't know if a longer run time would have helped this out, but it really seems like he just very quickly, okay, here's my plan, boom, 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 and it's implemented so flawlessly, there's no mistakes in it at all. Uh, you know, millions of things could have went wrong. Um, and, you know, that's just one of the flaws of the story right there. You know, things had to be executed perfectly by Jonathan Major's character to get his plan into motion and to accomplish his plan of stealing the title. Uh, and he does so without any problems at all. Uh, no hiccups. Uh, which, in, in a, like a real-life kind of thing, you know, in Creed 1 and 2, this is kind of a real-life drama that we were looking at. Uh, but, you know, so right there, it's a little far-fetched. Uh, weak, weak part of the story, it very quickly gets the title, you know, doing this, and then all of a sudden, you know, there's just that twist, and that animosity comes out, and, you know, Michael B. Jordan, you know, because he feels guilty, I guess, his guard was down, you know, guilty of his friend going to prison for him, essentially, um, and not keeping in touch, you know, basically writing him off. He was, you know, he felt guilty about that and wanted to help him out and, and let him have the shot at the title, which, you know, by the ways that he does so and gets the title, um, you know, makes uh, Michael B. Jordan basically look like a chump. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, Tessa Thompson again reprises hers, her role as the love interest of Adonis Creed, now wife, married, still pursuing her musical uh, aspirations and dreams, but can no longer perform live due to her hearing loss, uh, thus has gone the producer route. And uh, that story is touched upon a little bit, um, but it's a very interesting part of the story, and it just lightly coats that through there, so it doesn't really give her, you know, what little she has to do in this movie is good, but I think, you know, it, this movie, the story is unbalanced, is what I'm saying. Uh, I feel that there was a lot more we could have shown a light on for her, uh, having uh, Adonis Creed be this kind of mentor figure, but he's not the coach of his protege. He, he just runs the business side of it. It's his gym, but he has his, you know, his ring man basically doing all the coaching. So you never get that mentor ship here, and there's no one for Adonis in his dark hour of how do I take on my old best friend for him to turn to, not even his mother, uh, not his wife, um, you know, and it goes through like the whole bit of masculinity, uh, maybe toxic masculinity to a little bit of, hey, I'm the guy, I'm not going to share my feelings, I'm scared, uh, yeah, maybe I should have talked about this or I need to talk about this, but I'm just going to bottle it up inside. And it's like, eh, it's all a little bit muddled and confused in this storyline of Jonathan Major's uh, revenge plot. And again, there's really no good person that, uh, you know, Michael B. Jordan's character Adonis can relate to like in previously one and two of Creed, where he had Rocky Balboa, that father figure. Um, and he's just kind of lost, stumbling through this movie, trying to get through it and face, uh, you know, his old friend, uh, Damien, played by Jonathan Majors. Um, it parallels very much. If you want to think about this movie, it's kind of a combination of Rocky III, whereas Jonathan Majors is Clubber Lang, and uh, Rocky VI, where Rocky, old Rocky, comes out of retirement. Because Adonis Creed, he has retired as the champion at the, you know, at the start of the movie, we find out he had retired uh, undefeated, basically, uh, during his career. Uh, essentially, and, um, you know, three years after his retirement, he comes back when Damien, his friend, gets out of prison, steals the title, and comes back to try to, uh, to win it back from Damien, uh, to right the wrongs that he did in the ring, the dirty fighting techniques. Um, and in the end, after facing his fears and his old 
friend, now enemy in the ring, he comes to some type of catharsis and is more of a, a self-actualized, self-realized person now uh, in touch with his feelings and the past that he was trying to run away from and forget, essentially, uh, making him more of a fuller person. Again, a little bit of a convoluted story, very quickly told. I think they needed more fleshing out for all of these little intricacies of the plot, and that's why I gave it a shock of thumbs down overall. Uh, you know, like I said, Tessa Thompson has is a very rich actress, but she's not given very much to do, even though they try to, you know, for a few moments with her producing career, shine a light on her. But, you know, maybe if she had started to talk about, you know, or been that kind of mentor as the wife figure to, you know, coax out these feelings from Adonis. But, you know, and they kind of try that a little bit, but I don't think they've given it enough uh, there. There's a little subplot with his daughter now, um, you know, maybe about 12 years old. Um, that she wants to fight like her father, um, you know, getting into fights at school and such, you know, maybe becoming a troubled youth. And, you know, and that's kind of reflected, but that storyline kind of really goes nowhere either. So a lot of divergent plot lines that aren't resolved very well, like in Rocky III, um, where Burgess Meredith dies uh, and traumatizes, you know, Rocky before his fight with Clubber Lang. Um, Adonis Creed's mother dies in this movie. Again, I told you there were some spoilers. Uh, and that greatly affects him, and he's really off balance. But, it, you know, seeing that it, he doesn't fight him uh, bef before, you know, before she dies, or it, it doesn't seem to show any, any impact on his fight with uh, Damien. Uh, the death of his mother, even though it's played for serious feels in the heart. Um, it just, you know, I mean, yeah, we know it impacts him. He cries, he's sad, but it doesn't really, it doesn't stop his training. doesn't do anything like we had seen in the other Rocky movies uh, where, you know, yeah, and, and we don't even see like his ring man come in and give him any words of inspiration like what Rocky would have maybe possibly given him again from Rock, from Creed 1 and Creed 2. And then also because Adonis comes out of retirement, like Rocky comes out of retirement for another shot at the championship title uh, when he's older, a little rustier, even though Michael B. Jordan after three years doesn't really look rusty or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, or bro or a broke broke down old man like Rock was in Rocky Six. He does come out of retirement. He is older, and so those are some of the themes also from Rocky Th Six, along with Rocky Three, that are molded into Creed Three. And in doing so, I think it's all muddled. And you know, I think they needed a they needed a more uh, you know tighter story overall. Uh, when Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan are on screen together and talking, just the two of them, that is where it is the best of parts of this movie, uh, where you're getting into their old friendship and their desires for the future, etc. Um, what more can I say? Um, you know, uh, there's been some, you know, I mean... Michael B. Jordan does a great job directing this. There are some ring fights. This is probably one of the worst uh, Rocky-like fights that we've ever seen in the ring. Uh, and that is the, directly the directorial choices of Michael B. Jordan. Uh, so if there's any flaw in his directing, I would say it was those. And he said he was very uh, anime influenced, and you can see it even in his younger, as you know, the young actor playing Michael B. Jordan in his youth and his teenagers. His room is filled with like Gundam, uh, anime posters, Lupin the Third, etc. Um, you know, so yes, there's a heavy anime influence. They don't try to hide that. But even in the final fight with Jonathan Majors and Michael B. Jordan, Adonis versus uh, Damien. Um, 
there are some stylistic choices in the ring. Uh, the audience fades away and it's just them in a smoky kind of ring. Uh, punching one another uh, you know we see like the bars of prison have become the ropes of the ring uh, again very flashbacky kind of mental psychology uh, view of realism uh, that we've seen in anime movies and anime films where the heroes flashing back or you know seeing reality as they perceive it there in the moment uh, etc um, which I don't think really works uh, and again the the fight it kind of takes you away from what you you know you want to see that raw intensity uh, of of the rounds go by and I felt that this transition to this different kind of surreal uh, atmosphere in the ring uh, just kind of took away from the impact of the fight itself uh, yes, it was it was a, it was a it was a bold psychological choice trying to get into uh, Adonis's mind and how he's seeing that and even as Damien's uh, seeing it maybe with the bars from prison and all this stuff uh, and how it felt to be locked up and he's now in this ring is his cage and he's got to battle through it in the rounds maybe but I don't think that clearly comes through to your general audience. And again, overall, a shock of thumbs down for Creed, despite great performances and good directing by Michael B. Jordan, and of course, excellent acting by Jonathan uh, Majors and even Tessa Thompson. Uh, just wasn't enough to want me to see this movie again. Uh, you know, so check it out on streaming, you know, or at the discount times during the matinee, uh, if you want to see Creed 3, uh, just to complete and round out, uh, you know, the Creed story, uh, one, two, and three. After this one, I don't think there's going to be another. All right. Mahalo so much and aloha.